What's up, bros? Term one is starting, and there are a lot of mixed emotions going around right now. People are scared, nervous, worried, uh, concerned. They have a right to be. It is pretty scary coming in. You know, your first week, um, there's a lot of doubts and feelings that will collide and you don't know how to make sense of it. So here are five tips that you could implement to help you in term one, at least for your first two tests, which are gonna be basic principles of medicine, so your basic sciences. Tip number one, you will fall behind, but it's gonna be okay. Don't get overwhelmed, don't stress out, and don't panic. The workload that they give you is is actually a lot, and it's kind of like drinking, trying to drink from a fire hose when it's on full blast. It is way too much information, and it's way too fast, and it's kind of hard to digest it all at the same time. They will give you uh, so many slides that you, it almost feels like it's impossible to get through, but that's why I say it's, it's, it's okay to fall behind during the week. Um, you will have to attend other things like labs and meetings and uh, so your, your time is really committed to other things too where it will break up your schedule. So that's why you want to use your weekends to catch up. Your weekends are your best friend in medical school. There are no other time commitments that you have, so that's when you could really use those uh, weekends to, to really hit those long study strides. You want to use the weekends to to catch up on any past lectures that you weren't able to finish or you didn't understand, but also at the same time, review all the lectures to reread all those lectures that you were presented over the week. Um, basically, you wanna use your weekends to basically put a bow on all the material that you had, get it under your belt and give it a moment to digest and just have it all done by Sunday night so that you are ready for your next week uh, which is going to be a whole new variety of topics and ideas and concepts that you're going to have to understand. It's okay to fall behind. Always try your best to keep up with the material, but don't panic if and when you do fall behind and don't get overwhelmed. And that leads us to tip number two. Tip number two is you want to have at least two to three Passovers of your lecture slides. You're going to be presented the material, so listening and lecture, that will be one Passover. The second Passover is when you post read later on that day or the next day, you reread everything that that lecture presented to you and you, you catch all the little things that the, the professor might have skipped over and all the details in the slides. And then when that weekend comes, you want to review it either by yourself or in a study group. The way I do it is that I like to watch the lectures because all the lectures are recorded and put online. I like to watch the lectures and annotate along with my slides. I highlight and write notes on the side of the slides. And then on the weekend, I meet up with my study group and then we read the lectures out loud to each other. And it helps us really, you know, sit there and digest all the material. And that's when my friends could help fill in any gaps that I have and explain any concepts out and flesh them out. So the weekends is when I really benefit because that's when I get my first true solid understanding of the material. It takes that long for me to even, you know, start understanding what's going on in class. That brings us back to tip number one, you know, don't get overwhelmed and don't panic if you're, if you're falling behind and if you're not getting it right away. It takes time and it takes multiple passes in order to understand this information. It's, it's, uh, it's not, extremely difficult in the concepts that you learn. It's not some super scientific, extremely dense material, but it is a lot of material. And so that's where the difficulty comes in. The third pass for me comes in when that, you know, week coming up to the test, I start re-reviewing. I go over the lecture slides for a third time and I really just wrap it up and I, you know, I make sure I understand it. Now, tip number three, and probably one of the more important tips as well, is do your practice questions. Do not save them for the end. I used to be that person who uh, didn't like to do my practice questions because I felt like I didn't understand the material. That's a very wrong way of thinking in medical school. You actually want to do your practice questions. I am in term four and I still get all of my practice questions wrong my first time around. And I, it doesn't phase me anymore. It used to rock my confidence. And I used to be like, I'm not getting it, I'm stupid, I'm gonna fail, and you know, the anxiety and everything will just, you know, snowball effect and just mess up my whole day. Do your practice questions, and more importantly, do the ones that the professors provide for you before you go to any outside source. In fact, you should be doing those uh, at least twice. You know, do it when you, when you get them, 
um, because you, you will honestly you won't run out of questions it's, it's gonna be hard to run out of questions to do and you could always do them a second time and that's when you really start understanding uh, you know what the questions are telling you the reason why getting these questions wrong don't bother me is because I after getting the question wrong I will pull up that exact slide that the concept was going over and I will you know see exactly where the answer was and then take that time to really uh, to understand what that whole slide or that whole concept was talking about and Honestly, you learn it best when you get it wrong and you won't forget it and professors will usually basically ask that question but in a in a in a different way or will focus on another topic in that same concept. It's okay to get the questions wrong, don't let it bother you. Make sure you do the questions at least twice and on top of that, make sure you do the questions that the professors provide for you online first before you even think about going to any outside material. Also, another point which follows along with tip number three. Don't get overwhelmed with materials. Uh, a big mistake that I made was trying to collect all these materials and study guides and, and charts and things from all other study groups. And, uh, and I just started getting overwhelmed with all these, uh, all these extra materials. And it really messed with my organization my concentration and it just you know i ended up just tr spent so much time trying to collect all these different uh, uh materials and i ended up not looking at any of them uh so you just it's like a double-edged sword you 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 wasted time trying to collect them all and then on top of that you don't even use them and it just adds to your anxiety and your uh, your feelings of being overwhelmed when all you really need to do is just stick to the slides the fourth tip came to me because of a new friend that I made off of these videos and his concern was basically how do I change my study methods uh, in order to make it fit for medical school and the way they teach and test us and that was a really good point he was the type of person who would record his lectures throughout college record his lectures type up his notes and then study off of his notes and of course refer to the book or YouTube if he uh, didn't understand a certain topic you don't really know how to change your study methods until you're actually in it. You have to figure out what works for you. Your first term is basically used to figure out what works for you. I told him that it was completely fine for him to implement those same types of study methods that he that worked for him throughout college, but just be ready to tweak it a little bit because the way you're getting information is different. So his main concern was how do I switch up my study method? But the point is you're not supposed to switch it up fully or you're not supposed to switch it up drastically just do what works for you be a little bit flexible and be open to to tweaking your methods if you start really understanding a certain lecture if you understood it really well think back uh, reflect on what you did differently for that lecture did you go over it with a friend did you um, write out notes for it or did you just highlight the hell out of it you know and 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 that worked for you so tip four is the best study method you could use is the study method that works for you best Boom! And don't be hard-headed about it. Uh, if it's clearly not working, be open to making a change. And the last tip, tip number five, don't get burnt out. My mentor always told me, uh, medical school is not a race, it's a marathon. And that couldn't be more true. You will notice by the time your fifth exam comes around, uh, which is gonna be cardiac, pulmonary, respiratory, uh, CPR, you're gonna be so tired and so burnt out that you are almost like close to giving up. That happened for me, that happened to many of my friends. Pace yourself. You wanna do your best early on in the term and score as high as you can on your first couple of exams because by that time, your last two exams come around, you're gonna become a little tired and uh, just have that buffer. That's where eating right and keeping up with your good habits really come in because that keeps you sane. It will ease the burnout a little bit, but just try to perform and try to score as high as possible early on in the term so that when the end of the term comes around, you have a little bit of a buffer and some honorable mentions, some extra tips for you. Don't get overwhelmed with materials and just try to stick to one person or one study group, uh, one DES group. Always memorize the pathways, exceptions, and diseases. Uh, those should be like your three things that you should always keep in mind when you're going through uh, slides pathways of, you know, certain uh, biochem pathways of, you know, of pathways and uh, exceptions. 
Uh, you know, if a uh, hundred things do this and you have one exception, chances are the school is gonna test you on that one exception. And the same thing with the step. Diseases. Uh, everything that's clinically related is, 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 you know, very high yield and always very testable and they like to test that too. So they like to test pathways, exceptions, and diseases. PEDS, all the information that you need is on the slide. Don't, don't try to go to any other material unless I really, what I really like are YouTube videos that help explain the material a little bit more and will help you get a better understanding of it. And do your histo slides. Yeah, because histo. Pay attention when those histology labs come up because the clinical tutors will teach you a lot of things that you don't pick up in class. If you have a good understanding of that and have it you know, under your belt, those are gonna be good free points that you could get um, during the test and you could focus your attention on you know, the harder stuff. Camera switch. Okay, so there are your five tips to help you get through term one. Most importantly, just take a step back, relax. Uh, the more you let this anxiety and stress build up, uh, the more it's going to impede your studying. So just remember, it's, 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 it's a marathon, not a race. And I believe if you can get through term one, you could get through medical school. So just good luck. I'm rooting for you guys. Feel free to reach out or uh, stop me if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, good luck, bye.